Hey, what's going on guys? I'm back with another video. And in this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to set up uh, HDRI lighting, uh, which is image-based lighting. And also I'll show you how to set up and uh, the sky object and a couple different options you have in terms of controlling the brightness and uh, how much light you get and so on. Uh, so let's begin. Let's just create a quick scene. I'm not going to spend too much time on creating a scene here. So let me just throw some cubes in there. Uh, let's just duplicate this a couple of times, scale it down, maybe give it some uh, rounding as well. So let's do fillet, uh, maybe three, uh, three centimeter radius, and uh, five subdivisions is fine. Actually, let's delete this one, just copy and paste this cube here. And what kind of tutorial? Uh, you know, can you do it without a sphere? So let's just throw in a sphere in there. Oops. Let's put on top. Something like this, maybe. That's oh, way too big, the sphere here. So let's just scale it down a little bit more. Maybe something like this. And let's just throw in some materials. So I just double clicked uh, for the cubes. So let's do maybe go inside here. Uh, greenish bluish material maybe something like this uh, let's make it a little bit reflective here so let's delete the default specular add uh, Beckman uh, set it to additive and let's bring uh, bring up the roughness to maybe 15% and let's do the overall um, reflection to maybe 20 so it's not too crazy and Let's do, uh, for colors, do a uh, Fresnel. So you have a nice fall off. Uh, that should be good. And for the sphere, uh, let's throw in another material. Change the model to this one. Add, add a little bit of fall off. Uh, change the color to maybe, maybe like a red color. And uh, for the specular, uh, let's just Bump up the specular a little bit and add one more. This time let's do GGX. Uh, set it to additive and let's bring down the overall reflection to 10%. And that should be, yeah, that should be good. Okay, let's start off from um, the sky object. So, what you, what you do for image based lighting or uh, if you want to set up an HDRI. Uh, first, you create a sky, and uh, it looks something like this. And as you can see, uh, nothing really happened, even if I render right now. As you can see, this is the scene we get. It's still really flat, and uh, nothing is working. Uh, so for the physical sky and sky objects and any HDRI uh, stuff that you want to set up in Cinema 4D, uh, you do need to turn on your global illumination. Uh, so let's do that. I'm going to turn on my global illumination and for the presets I'll just do a quick exterior preview uh, so it doesn't spend too much time uh, calculating the global illumination and let's just do ambient occlusion uh, increase the overall length to maybe 200 and bring down the shadow or the blacks to middle gray so maybe let's do 50 percent click OK so now if we uh, create a material and set it to luminance or emission, whatever it used to, to 100%, all you have to do now is drop the emission material on top of the sky and this happens. So basically now if I click render, uh, the luminance material will take over uh, the physical or the sky object and will give me uh, pretty much image based lighting, but in this case it's color based lighting. Uh, so it will take the white color and use it as a sky object. So now if I render, let me just get a better angle for this. Maybe something like this. So now if I click render, as you can see, global illumination is uh, calculating. And it's going to be a little bit slow because I, I do have some reflective materials. But as you can see, what's happening is uh, we really get nice shadows, nice contact shadows, uh, really uh, nice uh, you know gradients for our materials and so on. 
but we get we getting these little you know splotches, but that's from uh, global illumination being uh, really low settings, so don't worry about that. And uh, for the image based lighting, so this is just in, you know material based, and it's only uh, emission or the luminous uh, material, uh, so only get the white color. But if you want to use image based lighting, your HDRIs, uh, the way you plug it in is inside the texture options here. So if I click here and uh, go to low image, let me just find you know some kind of HDRI. So for example, I have a 3K uh, Studio um, HDRI. So let's load that in and click no. And now everything changed. So now if we do the same render again, this time I will be uh, calculating the image instead of just being one a white color. So let's see what that looks like. So as you can see guys, we're getting nice uh, reflections going uh, from the HGRI Studio that I just uh, plugged in. We do need to increase our global illumination, but that's not the uh, point of this video. I just want to show you how to use it. So after you plug in your HDRI, uh, let me maybe try a different one. This studio one is not really that pretty, I would say. Maybe let's try the uh, fireplace uh, 4K HDRI. Open that up. So once you plug it in, you have a couple different options of controlling the brightness. If you try to crank it up in here, uh, where it says brightness, nothing will happen. So if, for example, if I do 400, and uh, this brightness only controls the color. So it would, it would get brighter if I was using only the color, not the texture. Uh, but in this case, if I do 400 here, uh, the, it's not going to be multiplied on top of the uh, HDRI image. So if I do a quick render, you will see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, guys, even though I cranked it up to 400, uh, the overall brightness of the scene is really dark. And uh, next, I will show you how to control the brightness of your HDRI images once you plug them in inside the... Let me just stop this render. Once you plug them in inside your luminous channel. Uh, so, like, like I said, this doesn't do anything when you're using HDRI images. Uh, so the way to control the brightness, you can go inside the uh, illumination tab, all the way in the bottom here. And here you have generate GL, or global illumination, or GI, I mean. You have uh, different you know options here for strength and saturation when, uh, and when you're generating global illumination. And also uh, when you receive global illumination as well. And also you have your options for caustics here. Uh, so if I crank this up to, for, for example, 250%, uh, you will see a huge difference. I'll just change, or maybe let's just keep the angle and uh, give it a render. And as you can see, overall, uh, scene got really brighter. And uh, now we can get a really nice um, result. Even though we're getting these splotches, I can show you later, once I crank up the global illumination settings, all of these splotches will go away right away. So if you compare it to the previous image, as you can see, it actually got brighter, and we're getting really nice uh, result, um, and uh, you know, getting a re nice reflection from um, the HDRI image. Let me just stop this render. I'm pretty sure you get the point. Uh, so now, if you control, if you want to control the colors of your HDRI and uh, you know the exposure and so on, the way you do that is you go inside here, go back to your luminous channel here. And uh, you click on this little arrow here next to textures, and you just do a filter. And what it's going to do is going to take your HDRI image and add it to a filter option. So now, if you go inside, you have uh, you know options for hue, so you can change the color of your overall HDRI. Also, you have your saturation. You can really saturate the image or unsaturate, go back to black and white. Maybe in this case, I'll keep it black and white. Also, you have your lightness, brightness, contrast, gamma, and so on. And also, you have uh, these curves here that you can enable for different channels. For example, red, green, and blue. So let me just activate that and play around with these uh, curves a little bit. So to add a point, you just hold Command or Control. Um, and you can play around with these options. It's basically Photoshop. And you can really customize how your HDRI looks. So maybe let's do like a high contrast pass like this. Maybe not too crazy. And now let's go back uh, to this image and give it another render. And uh, we'll see all the changes that we just did. So as you can see, guys, uh, this is the result that we got. After changing uh, some options, all the reflections are now uh, not as uh, orange and so on because I really desaturated the uh, HDRI image. 
And uh, the better the resolution of your HDRI is, the, the better the result you will get. So in my case, it was 4K. It was pretty, it's pretty good uh, resolution. But if you go to 8K, 12K, and so on, you can really get a nice uh, you know, result out of your HDRI images. So as you can see, guys, this is, uh, this is what we did. So this was without nothing. Then we added just the color, luminous channel, 100%. Uh, this was uh, the first pass with the uh, HDRI that I tried uh, with the studio one. It didn't really look good, so I switched to the fireplace. It was a little dark. Uh, we cranked up to 250% uh, brightness, so now we got a really nice result. And now we just desaturate the image and play around with the different settings there. And now this is the result that we got, and it looks really nice. Uh, so now if you want to play around with the positioning of your HDRI, all you have to do is click on your sky object, go to the coordinates tab, and in here you have all the rotations as you can see. And you have uh, you know feedback of reflections on your sphere there, so you can really see what kind of result you're getting. And same thing for the uh, P, you know, up and down, and uh, like this as well. You can really play around with your rotations. Now inside the uh, global illumination tabs, uh, once you switch it to, let's do like a nice render instead of just being a preview. Uh, so let me just do a QMC and uh, light mapping. For the, uh, for the gamma, let's crank it up to maybe 1.2. This is how you control the brightness as well. Uh, the maximum depth uh, is one of the options and gamma. So these two options are really important in, in case your uh, HDRI is kind of dark. You can play around with these two options. Also to get rid of the noise and to get a cleaner result, uh, the path count for uh, the secondary method light mapping uh, in here, you can crank up the overall uh, count of your uh, paths and that can help as well. And what else we have here? I wouldn't play around with these too much. All the default settings for uh, light mapping usually works. And let's see, 1.2, 16. Uh, let's try, let's give it a quick render. And maybe for the reflections on my sphere, I'm gonna increase it a little bit. Maybe put it to 50% so we can get some nice reflections out of the HDRI image. And just let's uh, position the camera, something like this, so we don't see uh, the HDRI as much. And maybe let's add a material to the floor as well, something like this. And I'm gonna turn off the uh, uh, reflections. Okay, let's give it a quick render and uh, see what that looks like. All right, guys, so the render just finished. It took a minute uh, with these simple scene, but I'm working on a laptop, so don't be afraid. And as you can see, we really got a nice result here. It's a little bit noisy, but, you know, I did not play around with the noise settings at all. Uh, but if you look at the scene, you know, how it's lit and all the gradients is really nice. The fall off is natural. Uh, the coloring is really nice as well. So once you crank up the settings in your uh, global illumination, you can really get rid of all of these splotches that you see on the floor. And all the previous renders but you know for quick for quick previews it's really nice to use uh, you know the presets that you have inside the global illuminations all of these you know just a quick preview you don't have to see you know perfect image right away uh, you can stick to the preview and then you can change the settings and crank up your you know settings for the overall look and the noise and so on anyway guys thank you for watching uh, please hit a thumbs up if you like this video and it helped you in any way uh, also, please subscribe and um, I'll probably see you in my next video, guys. Uh, have a good day.